This is Spencer with Black Sheep Designs. Today I'm going to show you guys how we make our one-piece loaders. I'm going to be taking this here piece of cherry and putting it on the CNC and getting it cut. So let's get going. All right, we're going to start here in Carveco Maker. You'll see that when you open your file, you will have these vectors here. So what I like to do is I like to make this rectangle and make it whatever size my piece is. So my piece of wood and mine was seven and a quarter by 22, give or take. So I set that down here on my origin point. So I know that this is the size that I'll be machining. So obviously I make my standard background a little bit bigger and then I just change this box size because obviously the size of wood could be changing as I go. So the first thing you want to do here on the right side, you can see all my different tool paths. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out this center. So you're going to highlight this vector and to make it easier, I can shut off that stuff. So we're highlighting this vector and let me get this over here and we're going to cut this at 0.7 depth. I'm using a quarter inch down cut, running pretty quick. These are my feeds and speeds. If you don't have a, uh, if you've got a belt driven machine, be careful. But if you've got a one finity worth of light, you can run pretty quick. This first pass, I run an offset tool path and it does it a little bit more efficiently than doing the raster in the beginning. So I run that and then we're gonna run a cleanup pass. So set up all your stuff, calculate that, and this is what it's gonna look like. After that, you're going to go to the mag pocket. So this is where the magazine's going to sit. And so I cut that at a quarter inch deeper than the first pocket. So for this instance, it's going to be 95 thousandths, almost an inch. And same thing, I'm going to run it at an offset. Um, I don't need ramping on for this one. And Calculate that, and that's what that's going to look like. So you're going to run this, then you're going to run this one, and then after that, I like to run a final path, and with this one, I'm going to run my start depth at 0.7, so that's going to go full depth on one pass, and I'm going to cut another 10 thousandths out of it, and what I do is a raster. So all these little machining marks, you'll end up seeing it, um, and if you run a raster back and forth, it really diminishes the amount of lines that you get. So I like to run this finish pass, just take a little skim cut off the bottom, and then we calculate that one out. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the mag bottom. 95 thou start depth, and then throw another, you know, whatever you want, five, 10 thousandths <clears throat> off the bottom there. So calculate that, and that finishes up your pockets. So that's easy there. Okay, so now we're gonna start with doing our slot. So if you check the PDF file that tells you exactly how to make this, you're going to start with this one here. That's your number one. So you're gonna start with your number one line. And these are the dimensions. You start at 0.6 deep, and then you're gonna finish height is 0.64. And what that's gonna do is, what we're really doing there is we're undercutting um, and it's cutting on the top side of the cutter. So this is going to be essentially cutting our start depth. So we calculate that guy out and you're running along the path, super important along the path. Um, make sure that your start node is here on the right. It, it really doesn't matter, but it's going to cut better if it starts on the right and cuts to the left. I'm using a conventional pass and then, um, in the instructions, it'll actually show you, it doesn't have it here, but it'll show you how to set up this tool if you haven't set it up already. So set it up like it is in the instructions, that will definitely help you. <clears throat> so you calculate that one out, and then you're gonna go to uh, the second cut, and what this is gonna do, this is actually gonna cut the bottom. So 0.6 start depth, and you're gonna go down to 0.69, so this will be just off the bottom. I have, the, the cutter that I have is, is tricky. If I try to cut it exactly at the bottom, it'll actually just barely burnish the bottom and it, you'll end up having to do another uh, finish pass on the, 
the bottom of your cut. So I like to bring it 10 thou off the bottom so that way it doesn't hit and it gives us a nice finish. So you calculate that. Now the next one is going to be on vector two, which is this top one. And what this is doing is you're gonna run the same two for your height. So you're gonna cut the top and cut the bottom of your slot. But what this one does is it gets you the right depth this way. So on the side of the cutter. So 0.64 deep, that's gonna cut the top. 0.69, that's gonna cut the bottom. So you calculate that. <clears throat> okay, so our top slot is complete. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom slot. The bottom slot is taller, so that's why we're only gonna go 54 thousandths deep. So start at 54, finish at 54, is gonna come down and follow this vector. This is now cutting the third vector. Let me clear these out so you guys can see. So this is cutting on the third vector. Again, just getting into the bottom, but not getting that full depth on the side. So this one cuts the top. This one, we're gonna go all the way to the bottom to 0.69. This cuts the bottom. And then the same thing on our last fourth vector. 54 is gonna cut on the top side and 0.69 is gonna cut on the bottom. So after you run those eight passes, they take about 30 seconds each pass, so four minutes. I run mine at, at um, 40 inch per minute feed rate. And your slot is done, so we're almost home. So the hard stuff is done. Next thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut out this handle. So I personally like to add tabs. So I do uh, 0.3 width, 0.3 thick. Um, and I just add two. I like to add them like this. It works pretty good, just offset them a little bit. And then calculate that out. And this obviously is on the inside. You're cutting on the inside of this vector. And then the last cut is going to be on the outside of the vector. And same thing, we want to add four bridges um, or tabs, depending on what program you're using. So we add those, and you can see they kind of add them in weird spots. And I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these down. And so they're going to cut on the edges or on the ends rather. And this one, I wanna make sure that we get away from this opening, right? So just like that, calculate it out, and that's done. And that's it, it's really simple. It's not bad, this whole cut with my speeds takes uh, right at 40 minutes. So, all right, let's go over to the CNC and get this cut. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this secured down to the table. So just for quick measurements, this is a rough piece. It's about seven and an eighth by 22 inches long. It's about an inch and a 16th thick, so a little thinner than we like, but it's gonna work just fine. So I like to get it nice and square on the table and then use these clamps that I 3D printed to get it securely fastened. The absolutely last thing you wanna do is have this thing move at all, so. Everything kind of set where you want it. This is obviously square, and I put it up against my fence, so we're good to go. And I just tighten everything down. I'll be setting Z here on the bottom left corner. So I use my touch probe here say that I want to set my XYZ and send it. This is a quarter inch two flute down cut bit from High Country Tools. Their stuff is really nice, works really well. So we just touch both sides. What this is doing, this is setting our X. The way these touch plates work is they know the dimensions and I'll show you here in just a minute. They know this distance and they know this distance. So when it touches this plate to this corner, the computer will do the math. And same thing from this plate to this. It does the math and it, it uh, tells the corner, tells the, excuse me, tells the machine to take the center line of this bit 
and put it right on the corners. So, and obviously it knows the thickness of this. So it touches that and then subtracts so this thickness. So the start of so our it puts it directly offset on this tool corner. path. So it's just pretty going nice. to you drive around. You guys saw in the back there. Definitely get one and get this stuff cut out. Here's a quick time lapse of what that first tool path looks like. It does a pretty good job. Pretty efficient. It, the the finish is really nice. Then if you look really close here, you'll see the lines from the offset tool path. So you can sand those out, not difficult, but it's just easier to do this, which this is the finish pass. Here we're just setting our Z with our T-slot bit. And then we're going to go ahead and cut those slots. So these are the slots, so they're quick and easy, about four minutes. And then here is a quick shot of us cutting out the handle. Um, again, 175 inch per minute is what I run, but run, uh, run what you like, run at your own risk, obviously. So, and then here, this is us just montage cutting out the outside. This is us removing it. We're going to use a flush trim saw and go ahead and cut all the tabs nice and smooth. If you, you can cut these out any way, if you'd rather just, uh, use a flush trim router bit and get it, or I like to just use the saw and get close. After that, I'll go ahead and put a round over on all surfaces, um, get everything nice and smooth. This is an eighth inch round over. I, I think it turns out really, really nice. Be careful when you're cutting right here. Um, make sure that you got your bit set right, so that way the bearing will catch that lip. Sometimes it'll fall inside and it'll it'll get ugly and then after that I throw on some 220 and everything gets a good sanding with 220 on the orbital and then sometimes I have to go down and use like a 120 grit just to get any scratch or anything like that but you want this thing to feel really nice in the hand after that I'm gonna use some of these little micro sanding pads if I can ever dig them out of my box here and uh, Everything else that didn't get touched with the orbital is going to get hand sanded. Um, we're going to get rid of any lines with this, and then we're going to go over all of the edges, make sure everything's nice and smooth. When you're done sanding, you can put it in the laser. You can see here that I've already lasered this one, so if you have a laser, you can go ahead and do that. I included this file with the package that you guys purchased, and then after that, I just use natural Danish oil, rub this thing down. I let it cure overnight. This has a little bit of poly in it, so it actually uh, cures fairly hard. It's a pretty durable finish for what we're using here. So feel free to use whatever finish you like, but this is what I like. It's pretty easy. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this project. If you liked it, Go ahead and like this video, subscribe. Uh, I'll be making another one for the two-piece loader for you guys, as well as a how-to on how to make the enhanced push block. So stay tuned, and we'll see you on the next one.